I'm here with Marcus of Little Bird Electronics, who has uh, been working very hard on the Microview, and also Jeremy Bloom, who has written, uh, tell us the name of your book again. Jeremy. Exploring Arduino. Exploring Arduino, and now Jeremy went to school at Cornell, at Cornell and uh, um, one of the things that's really interesting is the book that he wrote is now being used as the textbook for those courses. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. The book came out almost a year ago now, and uh, it's been selling really well. A couple of universities are using it as a textbook, and it's been a lot of fun. Now, Marcus, I really enjoyed hearing you on the App Hour recently talking about the, uh, the uh, Microview. And uh, one of the things I thought was really funny is how um, they thought it was a, a hoax because you had hidden the wires in the um, production shot. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we wired the, the wires behind my finger and down up my arm with a lot of electrical tape, and uh, it was fun to take that off. Um, we really earned our money then. Um, yeah, they thought it was actually a render because our industrial designers did such a good job. So. Yeah. yeah, and we ran a feature of it. If you haven't seen it before, go and look that up. The microview is really gorgeous. It's uh, basically a breadboardable um, Arduino circuit that's got an OLED display in it. Is that right? That's correct. Marvelous. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking to us today, and uh, have a great Maker Faire. Thanks. Thanks, mate. I'm here with Ben Heck, and interestingly enough, we both live in Madison, Wisconsin, or near Madison, Wisconsin, oh, but yeah. we're here in uh, San Francisco for Maker Fair, and Ben's going to talk a little bit about his latest hack for his show. The latest hack on our show, well, we did a pair of texting radios. Uh, you come to these shows, and a lot of times your cell phones don't really work that right. well, so we found this ERIC, e RIC radio module. It has an MSP430 in it. So I think it's from England. And we got a couple through Element 14. Then we kind of made these dedicated texting radios. And it was kind of funny. Our production assistant, who's not here at the moment, who that he's named John. That's why I got confused. Uh, anyway, uh, he was like, "Hey, if this could be also a walkie-talkie, this could be a cool project." So we do a lot of stuff that I wish we had more time to take it to um, completion. Uh, like the robot luggage we did years ago. That was still my favorite thing we ever built. It was luggage that would follow you around the airport, and it was like a carry-on, and the leg came out. So anyway, yeah. I'm yeah, but running them through to completion is just a grind. You want to do the fun part over and over again, right? Yeah, that's true. I guess that on the show, yeah, we get it just enough to demonstrate it, and then we immediately move on to the next thing. But as a designer, it, it would be nice to take some of the stuff to completion, like especially like robot luggage. Hi, I'm Mike Stish, managing editor of Hackaday.com. I'm at Maker Faire Bay Area, and I just ran into Caleb Kraft and Phil Burgess. We all used to work together, and now we're on to our old thing, own things. Let's see what everyone's doing. Caleb, what are you doing these days? I'm the community editor at Make, and I read Hackaday every day still. Love you guys. How about you, Phil? Uh, working at Adafruit now, and likewise, always reading Hackaday every day. Great. Well, it's nice to run into both of you. Make sure you visit uh, Caleb's post on uh, Make and Phil's post on Adafruit. I'm here with Hackaday alum Ian, who founded Dangerous Prototypes and, and uh, is actually on the judging panel for the Hackaday Prize. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. How are you doing at the fair? I'm doing great. Having an excellent Maker Fair. I got to tell you, I was really interested to see all the work that you did with the Hacker Camp in Shenzhen. How was that for you? Oh, it was a blast. We had 40 hackers from all over the world come to Shenzhen, China, and we spent a week at a, solder, a cell phone repair school where we learned advanced soldering techniques. We actually brought a little bit of that here to the Maker Fair. I've been sitting there over all day sitting there reballing BGA chips right here on the floor. It's the second time I've done it in the wild. I also did it at Hacker, uh, sorry, I also did it at Maker Fair Shenzhen, where we sat there in the rain outside on the street, reballing BGA chips right in the rain. And we couldn't find acetone for cleaning everything up, so we used baijiu or Chinese rice wine to clean up really? the chips in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So in addition to all the technical stuff you did, I always love it that you throw in a lot of cultural things. Um, can you talk about what you did culturally at that and and also with, um, in conjunction with this Maker Fair. Okay, well at Hacker Camp Shenzhen, we had two really big cultural approaches, right? The first thing is, people show up in China and it's all different. And you wonder, what the hell am I gonna eat? Like food is always a challenge for people coming to China for the first time. Right. So we put together a full program of eating opportunities and we had people around for the better part of a month. And so for the better part of the month, every night, we would take people to a different restaurant, to a different bar, to somewhere to eat and drink and party all night long. It was a really good time. And the other aspect is that Shenzhen isn't just about making electronics. You can make anything in Shenzhen. So we took people to a sign street 
where they make neon light up, LED blinky signs, injection molded signs, all sorts of signage. We took people to what we call the Copy Mall, which is a building where they sell knockoff products. Really? But at the very top of it, there's a whole floor of fabric wholesale and tailors and people who sew. So you can have like adult sized footy pajamas made <laughs> or just a really nice looking suit for right. about a hundred bucks. Wow. So we tried to like show that you, it's not just about making electronics in Shenzhen. You can make damn near anything there. Uh, we're always looking at your forums because there's a lot of good stuff coming the, from the forums. And uh, I love all the open source stuff that you guys are doing um, as a group on the blog. So thanks yeah, thank for talking so to much. us today. Yeah, thank you.